as the British did during Brexit, should turn up and vote for this important election. Today, I'm honored and humbled to accept the mantle of seeking the leadership that the people of Uganda from all the sub-counties will be bestowing upon me in the next election. I have every belief that we shall have fair competition with all the members, I mean with all the aspirants, and we hope to invite the electoral commission at this time to pay particular attention to running and delivering a free and fair election. Uganda today, irrespective of who is the executive in office, is faced with monumental challenges. I have in my many speeches listed quite a number of them. Today, 2020, 20, 25 after promulgating our constitution, in which I participated as a draftsman, the rights of citizens are no longer protected through the legislation that upholds the spirit of our constitution, but by rather those who occupy the executive office. You know very well how much pressure has been bestowed, has been asserted on me, and I would want to say I hope this marks the end of very irregular and illegal actions from those who hold these offices. I would like to tell Ugandans that uh, we have 4.5 trillion in terms of debt. This is the public debt. This is a, a ministry larger. No, no, sorry. This is very, very deep a debt for an economy like ours. And I would want that we become very, very, very sensitive about the speed at which we are borrowing other taxpayers' money. And I would want to raise an important point today that Africa must stop living on other taxpayers' money. And uh, I would want to say again that uh, the important thing about what we have as resources, we have very many resources. I am of the view that we should start tapping resources, our own resources, to be able to run our own country without depending on foreigners and foreign debt. Our promise to Ugandans is very, very simple. We shall operate so much on the subject of infrastructure. We shall spend quite a lot of time on, on energy. But maybe I should say something about uh, infrastructure. No country in the world with 45 million growing at 3% can ever grow by consuming 600 megawatts of electricity. In 2021 and bundle the existing electricity tariff to release constrained demand has kept our country in a, a very in, in, in an energy poverty trap infrastructure will expand the electricity infrastructure and generation of power. Private sector must look unto us. We know very well that SMEs we provide, I mean we are creating employment and fostering economic growth. We will acquire cheap capital from the developed world and lend it to businesses at less than 10% rates. SMEs, we promise to especially support our nation's top, nation's top employer, SMEs and cottage industries. The SMEs constitute 19% of the private sector and we shall contribute 80%. And uh, yes, contribute 80% of our, our manufacturing output and provide 2.5 million jobs. However, only 30% of them live to celebrate their third, 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 third birthday due to difficulty to meet overhead such as electricity, transport, and capital. We shall tackle government spending. I am very, very interested that apart from overspending, we also have too many leakages, and I think we have to take care of them if we are going to run 
an interesting, I mean, a, a progressive and effective country. Health workers, please wait for our great attention, especially with the pandemic, you need greater attention than you deserved even earlier. Teachers, count on us. We shall take special interest in you. We shall make sure that no single responsibility, responsible government would just look on as you go months without pay or a loan facility to start small business for individual, for, for survival during this long holiday. We shall not allow this to happen. We shall pay special farmers. We shall attend to you. I intend to bring an end to the story of the whole. And this is a really a very, very important endeavor. And I believe like Malaysia hung the whole in 1972, we should be able to do the same as quickly as we can. We shall care to fix the economy, cut the electricity and user tariffs for domestic consumers to support the nation's largest employer, SMEs. Merge post bank with private microfinance and capitalize them with trillions of shillings per financial year to, per financial year to specifically give cheap credit to SMEs particularly. We shall establish a number of cooperation to manage seed and even export and we shall also be having, giving special, <laughs> excuse me, special attention, no COVID, don't worry, special attention to mining, and of course we shall have an outstanding mining cooperation. The same goes with fishing. We shall organize fishing because fish is, is, is procured at uh, 3,000 shillings, and by the time it gets on a plate in Europe, it is 60 dollars. I want you to tell the comparison and see how much we are working for other people. Fellow Ugandans, matters on environment, tourism, which should be actually the easiest industry to turn around has not been given enough attention. We shall work on tourism and make sure that we, <coughs> we excuse me, we make sure that we turn around what used to be a 1962 legacy story where Uganda was the leading tourist company in East Africa. I must say that we shall go into areas like constitutional review, but I didn't want to bother all of you here with these big programs. I want to tell you that our manifesto <coughs> will come up clearly. Peace, security, and regional relations. We shall build peace. And I'm an expert on security and we shall promote regional relations. Armed forces, you know I'm your own. I'll give you all the attention you deserve. What you didn't get yesterday, you can get tomorrow. The future of Uganda, fellow Ugandans, lies in our hands. I would want that we spend more time this particular season, all of us Ugandans waking up to the cause or make sure, making sure that we particularly deliver change. I know we have no chance to conduct a proper election from the circumstances I'm seeing, but this does not deny Ugandans the opportunity to come out and vote. I know they can vote whether they hear from us or not. Uganda is too important to be left politicians. The other point I wanted to end with is my most favored subject, the subject of the young people who are below the age of 30 <coughs> who are now 10.8 million voters, although only 9.8 were registered. Take my special invitation that you go in and vote. When you vote us, you'd have voted ourselves. I would want to really thank everybody and uh, most importantly, thank the security running for those who are not offensive. So I just thank them for running this uh, rather cumbersome exercise. And for those of you who are offensive, do get to remember that Uganda in January may change. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best.